Hi, in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to work with brushes, uh, create a brush and which brush to use. As you can see here, I've already set up a, um, I already have a, a, a stitch here and that's, and that's called the chain stitch. And I have two separate uh, shapes here, straight line with, you know, a nice little curve there. I'm going to, sh the reason I, I have these two shapes here is to show you what happens when you choose two of the three brushes, um, which we're going to cover today. Um, this shape here, this chain stitch, I got from a sample we had. Um, and if you're in the industry, the fashion industry, you know what that means. Um, what, you know, someone, we like the uh, shape, shape of that stitch. So what we did was just scan it in and trace over that one um, pattern, one repeat. Um, so once you have that set up, you're going to open your brush palette and you're going to drag that in. For now, we're going to start with the scattered brush, and then we're going to move on to the pattern brush. I'm going to show you the difference, which is why I have those two shapes here. So we're going to go OK. Now, with the name, you're going to want to start to create a filing system because there are so many times, uh, times that you're going to use the same brush, or you're going to want to create a library. Um, so, But for now, I'm just going to leave it as a scattered brush one. Uh, rotation relative to path. Now you don't want it as page because it's going to keep it horizontal to the page path. It's going to follow the curve of the um, the, the, the uh, path. I'm going to show you later on what happens, but for now we're going to keep it as path. Now colorization, none. You don't want to leave it as that because then you, whenever you ch want to change that color, that once you have the stitch uh, set up and you want to change that color, it's not going to accept it. So you're going to want to go to tints. Key color, don't worry about this. Um, that's, oh, I want to just digress a little bit. I have it as, uh, uh, set up as black. You want that as black because when you set it as tints, it's going to accept the color swatch that you pick as a, you know, as its full color rather than a tint of that color. So I know this is, this sounds a little weird when it says tint. Um, so you, it, it don't worry, select tint and then hit okay. Now we're going to select that. The, the top uh, shape and then hit that hit the uh, brush and as you can see it looks okay on the straight but when it gets into the curve it starts to um, get a little choppy here it starts to you know break it into three segments um, as you know straight rather than following a nice curve illustrator's always done this it really bothers me that it does that um, so it only really works um, when it's straight on you know, straight path, but when it comes to some kind of curve and you want it to look smooth, it it really doesn't uh, work very well, and I wish they would fix that. Um, but let's double click on that because the, the spacing, we want to adjust that spacing. We're going to want to slide that down a little bit, make it a little more tighter. Um, it looks pretty nice, uh, the, the stitching, what it would normally look like once it's embroidered, and go OK. I'm going to apply that stroke. Now we're going to create another uh, brush. This one is going to be a pattern brush. Hit OK. Um, once again, you're going to want to create a, a library. So I'm going to leave for now. I'm going to leave it as uh, pattern brush one and spacing. Um, once again, you're going to want to create uh, hit tints. Go OK. Select that brush. And you see here, it, it's it, the box, and then you got a, a line here. So the box is a scatter brush, and this one's a pattern brush. So, you see that? Now it create the curve really follows the curve nicely, except when you get to these, the, you know, some extreme curves, it doesn't uh, follow properly. It kind of stretches it out, distorts it a little bit, but that's fine, um, because that's never gonna happen on an embroidery machine anyway. But for the look, it, it it works. Now the spacing here, it you know we want it tight like this. I'm gonna show you something. I really hate that you got to do this. Um, it the uh, Adobe should really have it as a slider as we did with the other brush. But the spacing here, as you can see, it's set at zero. You got to put that in. Um, it doesn't do negative. So if I wanted it tighter, I got to come in. Uh, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to put negative 15. I'm going to show preview. It doesn't do anything. It goes straight to zero. 
what we have to do now is drag this back. You're going to go back to this uh, pattern brush and drag it out here. I'm going to show you why. I zoomed in on that. I'm going to go to the direction tool. Now, this box is basic acts like a um, a mask. So it automatically puts that box around any brush you create or any symbol. So we're going to come in here and select two of the corners and bring it in a little bit. I'm going to zoom out here. Now, remember, I brought in that box, as you can see, that invisible box. Now, I'm going to hold down Option. And as you can see here, it, that box, you see, if I, if I don't hold down the Option, it does, it, it just, it's just going to create another brush. But if I hold down Option, it, it uh, creates that little uh, box around the existing uh, brush. What that means is just, it's going to copy it. It's going to uh, overwrite the existing brush. Now, I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to apply the strokes. See that? Now it brought it in. This is not a, an exact science. Um, so you're going to have to play with the positioning of that invisible masking box to, to um, get that brush closer. Um, sometimes it, and it gets a little frustrating. And as you can see here, um, it breaks. It, it doesn't really follow the... the uh, well, it doesn't close that little corner gap. That's why you have all these other boxes here. That's what those are there for. So that way you can put it in there. Um, I like to sometimes, instead of doing that, because it doesn't necessarily look that good anyway, when you, when you um, put the other uh, pieces in there, I just go in and select the scissor tool and just cut that. That brings it in. It brings it, it, it breaks it up as two, two lines, but you also get a better, you know, outcome, in my opinion. So there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Ooh, I almost forgot. Uh, let me just show you what happens with the um, colorization. All right, so now I have both, uh, both lines selected, and now we'll see as I select different... Um, swatches it turns it to that particular color so there you have it that's um why we select tints and not the other option which is none i'm going to apply that to strokes and look you see that's what happens it just keeps it as a regular so we want to make sure that it's set at tints and that and there you have it